Hey guys, I have been holding on to these tips for quite a while now, but I wanted to get it out to y'all and I just haven't been feeling well and I'm feeling way better than I've been feeling recently, but still not 100%, but good enough to make this video. I go to a lot of baby showers. Everyone's always having children and I love to help to plan baby showers and I'm also a mom, so I've also had my own showers. And so I just thought that I would come and share some tips on how to plan a baby shower with you. When planning any kind of party or event, you first have to discuss the specifics. So you need to know what date you'll have the shower on, what time you'll have it on. You need to know the guest list, which the mom-to-be will most likely provide you with the list of contact information, addresses, whatever information you need for the guests because the last thing you want to happen is for someone really important not to be invited because you did not have their contact information. After you learn all of the specifics, then you need to set a budget. The person hosting the event normally pays for it unless you have some other kind of agreement, but I know that every shower I've thrown, I've always um, paid for everything. So you need to know how much you're planning on spending for the entire event. And that budget includes the venue. If it's a more intimate event, if it's smaller, then maybe a home will be appropriate. If it's warmer in the non-rainier or not so cold parts of the year, you might want to have it outside, maybe at a park. If those two are not options, you can always um, rent out a space. You just have to keep in mind that if you are deciding to use a different venue, then the venue itself might take the largest portion of the budget. But it also might include the food and that's something else that you need to take into consideration. The budget includes invitations, decoration. Also, if you're choosing to do games, the budget also includes the prizes for those games. So after you have the time, the date, and the place in order, it's time to send out the invitations. I personally like paper invitations. That's just my personal preference. I love to make invitations. There's so many different templates you can use online. You can also get creative with them. There's so many free templates and also templates that you can purchase online. But you're always welcome to send invitations online. I know that Evite is really big for invitations and also Punchbowl is a nice way to send out invitations. It's also best if guests have the invitations in their possession from four to six weeks before the event. That gives them enough time to schedule other things around it. And it also gives you enough time to set up different things so that you can see how many people um, will most likely be attending. I know that there's been instances where not many people have replied if they're coming or not. So I have called them to see if they will be attending. And it seems like a lot of people are attending, but they don't really think that a reply is necessary. So make sure you're specific and let people know to reply. If you're a little bit more laid back and you think that you'll have enough food and, and everything else for the event, then that's probably not necessary. For decorations, I also like to create things myself. I know that Dollar Tree has a lot of variety of different types of um, plates and cups and napkins that match and also there's a place here in Houston called Arnie's and they sell a lot of um, items wholesale and so if you're having a larger event then you might want to go there. Sometimes the dollar stores are not as cost effective as they might seem. I often like to purchase a few of the plates and cups and things, napkins in the theme set but then I do like to go to the grocery store and just get a few other items that match it like I did here and then no one will tell the difference it looks like they all came together and then you're not spinning an arm and a leg at the dollar store diaper cakes are also a good alternative for decorations it's something that the mom to be can take home and actually use I've posted a couple of videos showing how I've made diaper cakes in the past and here's some pictures on to the food so a uh, food can really make or break an event if people are hungry then they become grumpy and then no one's having a good time so I like to spend a lot of time and effort into food so you can use the venue if you're having a venue you can also have someone cater it in and you can also do like a potluck where other people bring in food so something that you need to be very careful to do is to Ask the mother to be what type of food she wants. The last thing you want to do is to have a hungry pregnant woman at her own event. 
So you want to make sure you keep her happy. And the way to do that is just to simply ask her what she wants. If she's a meat and potatoes kind of lady, have meat and potatoes at her baby shower. If she likes finger foods or appetizers, then have that. You can have sandwiches if she's more simple and just likes that. You can have um, just an array of appetizers like wings and meatballs. Um, but if she wants food, pasta, casseroles, those are really easy ways to go. But you can also have baked chicken, rice, green beans, you know, just it depends on the mother to be. So you want the guest of honor to be happy and enjoy the event. Cake is another thing that you have to think about when it comes to food. If she likes chocolate, then make sure the cake has chocolate in it. The food's really important and you need to make sure that the guest of honor will be happy. Once everything is put in place, then you need to organize the actual events of the day. Normally, I like to give the guests 30 to 45 minutes to arrive. So if it starts at 3, then we're going to start eating anywhere between 3.30 and 4 o'clock. So I like to go ahead and eat first, make sure everyone's stomachs are full, and if latecomers arrive, they can go ahead and fix their own plates and um, they won't really miss any of the fun. When I see everyone starting to finish up eating, then I start the games. Some people don't like baby shower games, but I personally do. Here are a couple of games that I've done in the past. <laughs> if you're going to open the gifts at the baby shower or let the mother to be open them at home something that has seemed to work out for me is to have the mother to be cut the cake and while the rest of the guests are eating she opens the gifts and so people are there enjoying the dessert and she's opening the gifts and if someone doesn't really care about the gifts then you can possibly start cleaning up at that time as well so it just kind of depends on the crowd that you're having there and what everyone wants to do i also like to have a guest sign-in sheet and that's good because the mom-to-be knows who is there with her shower i made a little guest book sign-in sheet it was really simple to do just paper and this is how i did it I printed out a cover page that matched the theme of the shower and then I printed out corresponding colors to match the shower as well. I punched two holes in the side of it and threaded ribbon through the back of the pages. Then I tied a bow and used scissors to make spirals at the end of the ribbon. You can also add in the guest sign-in sheet a page for gifts and so while the mother-to-be is opening the gifts the host can write down who gave the gifts so that um, when the mother is doing her thank you, she knows who's given her different things. Party favors are also a big thing. I like for the guests to be able to leave with something to remember the event by. And I made these flower pins and this is how I did them. I purchased different colors of flowers that matched the shower theme and it was a boy so I bought blue pens, floral tape, ribbon and I created and printed off these tags. I punched a hole in the corners of each tag. I took the cap off the pen and snapped the little tag off because I felt like it just gave me a sense of empowerment but then I cut off the rest with scissors. I also removed the stems from the flowers and cut those. I start wrapping the floral tape around the pin and as a point of reference I start wrapping right above that little hole that's on the pins. I just continue wrapping all the way around until I get very close to the top. I place the flower stem about three inches from the top of the pin and then I use the floral tape to secure that to the pin. Once I reach the top of the pin, I go back down the pin with the floral tape a few more times for added security. I insert the ribbon into the hole that I punched in the tag and I secure the tag to the flower with a bow. I keep the pins in a vase as a floral arrangement until it's time for the games and then each guest gets one to use during the games and to take home.
So after opening all the gifts and when it seems like the party is starting to die down a little bit, I usually give the mother-to-be the opportunity to say her thank yous and it's usually a very tearful moment and so it's nice. I think she enjoys it. I think the guests enjoy hearing a verbal thank you as well. If you don't have a specific set time that you have to leave the venue, at that time you can allow the guests to just linger talk amongst themselves, help clean up, and then everything's clean by the time it's over. Those are just some tips that I have for y'all, and so I hope y'all enjoyed those. Thank y'all so much for watching, and I hope I helped some of you out. Bye!